Hello and welcome to the video. In this video, we are going to talk through the idea of adding and subtracting with standard form. I'm going to show you my preferred method. And then after I've been through a few examples, I'm going to show you an alternate method. Um, so you have two different approaches to answering addition and subtraction questions in standard form. Okay, we'll start with the question that's on the screen now. 4 times 10 to the power of 5, and then I'm going to add that to 3 times 10 to the power of 4. Notice that the question wants me to give my answer in standard form. So my final answer also needs to be in standard form. So the first thing I'm going to do, and the way I like to approach most of these questions, is to change the standard form back into an ordinary number. So I'm going to change 4 times 10 to the power of 5 back into an ordinary number. And I'm also going to change 3 times 10 to the power of 4 back into an ordinary number. Let's have a look at what my working out should look like. Okay. So first of all, if we look at the left-hand side of the screen, I've took the number 4 times 10 to the power of 5, and I've converted that into a normal number. So remember this 5 for the index number indicates that the decimal point will have moved 5 places. Because it's positive, it's moving in the right direction when I change back into a normal number. When we're dealing with an integer here, this index number also relates to how many zeros should follow the integer. 3 times 10 to the power of 4, my index number is 4, so I'm going to have moved my decimal point 4 times. Because I'm dealing with an integer, I'm expecting 4 zeros. Now that I've got both numbers back in ordinary form, I'm just going to go ahead and add them using a bit of column addition. So I've actually got 400,000 add 30,000, which gives me 430,000. So this is the result of my addition. However, the question did say, give your answer in standard form. So I'm going to change 430,000 back into standard form. So this is my number here, and you can see where my decimal point currently is. I've put it here in red to make it stand out. So I'm just going to change this number back into standard form, which means I need to move the decimal point so the number is between 1 and 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I'm going to drop the decimal point there, 4.3. So that number is between 1 and less than 10. I couldn't have dropped it here because I would have had 43, and I couldn't have dropped it here because I would have had 0 0.43. So now I'm dealing with 4.3, and I move my decimal point 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 places. So my final answer is 4.3 times 10 to the power of 5. This time, because I'm going from a normal number into standard form, my index number is positive when I move the decimal place to the left. Let's have a look at another question. 5.2 times 10 to the power of 6 plus 9 times 10 to the power of 5. So both numbers are given in standard form because this number here is between 1 and less than 10, and this number here is between 1 and less than 10. I need to add them together and give my answer in standard form. I'm going to use a very similar approach that I did in the previous question. I'm going to change both numbers back into ordinary form, then go ahead and do the addition, and then change my answer back into standard form. So here's my working out. So this number here, 5.2 times 10 to the power of 6, becomes this number here, 5,200,000. The decimal place is moved six times. 
Because this is not an integer, I was not expecting six zeros. There's actually only five zeros in this number because one of the movements of the decimal point is to go over the two. Nine times 10 to the power of five becomes nine with five zeros. We are dealing with an integer, so five zeros are expected. Then I go ahead and add these together. 5,200,000 add 900,000 gives me 6,100,000. So I've carried out my addition, but again, I want my answer in standard form. So I'm just going to take my decimal point and move it one, two, three, four, five, six places and drop the decimal point there. So that number is now 6.1. I couldn't have dropped it earlier because that would have been 61, which would have been too big. If I dropped it later, it would have been 0 0.61, which would have been too small. So I'm dealing with 6.1 and I moved the decimal place six times. So my answer in standard form, 6.1 times 10 to the power of six. Let's have a look at another question. So this time I'm going to use a very similar approach, but this time it's a subtract question. At this point, I should just mention that the brackets in the question, sometimes they will be there, sometimes they won't, depending on the textbook, depending on the exam board. They don't really uh, change or influence the question. Usually they are just included so that the sign in between is a bit more obvious. So for example, you don't get this multiplication mixed up with a multiplication in the center of the two numbers, if we had a multiplication question. But the brackets, they don't change the question and they don't alter the method that we're going to use. Okay, for both numbers, I'm going to change them into ordinary form. Then I'm going to go ahead and do the subtract. Three point one times ten to the power of six. I'm moving the decimal place six times. The first movement will be over the one, and then I need an additional five zeros, which takes me to three million one hundred thousand as an ordinary number. 5 times 10 to the power of 5, because it's integer, I'm expecting 5 zeros, 500,000. This time we're doing a subtract, so we set up column subtraction. We go ahead and do the subtract. We're left with 2,600,000 after we've done the subtract. Again, the question asked me for an answer in standard form, so I'm going to go ahead and change this back into standard form. There's my decimal point. I'm going to move it one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to drop it there. 2.6. And I move the decimal point six times to the left. So I'm expecting an index number of six. 2.6 times 10 to the power of six is the answer to this subtraction. With this question, I'm just going to show you a slightly different approach, a somewhat easier approach to answer questions like this one. What I mean by that is when your power of 10, your index number, is the same. So in my previous examples, the index number has always been different between the two numbers you're adding or subtracting. When the index number is the same, we can approach the question in a different way. This is what our working out could look like. So when we come to add the two numbers in standard form, rather than changing them both to ordinary numbers, because we're dealing with the same index number, we can just go ahead and add the numbers at the front of the standard form. So here, six add seven, it's gonna give me 13. So that just gives me 13 times 10 to the power of 5. So because this was both 10 to the power of 5, I knew I was going to end up with 10 to the power of 5 after I did my addition. So this would be my answer. However, that is not in standard form because 13 is too big. 13 is greater than 10. 
So I just need to make a little correction to change this 13 so it is between 1 and less than 10. So my decimal point starts here. I'm just going to move it 1 in this direction to make the number 1.3. Because I moved the decimal point once, once to the left, I need to add 1 to the index number. I made this number 10 times smaller, so I have to make this number 10 times bigger. So my answer to this question is 1.3 times 10 to the power of 6. So when you're given a question and the index number on the 10 is equal, you can use this method if you prefer it to get your final answer. However, the method I've discussed on my previous examples, changing the numbers to ordinary numbers, will of course work for these questions as well. Okay, so now I've shown you this second alternate method, I just want to go through this question again. So we did cover this question earlier in the video, but I just want to show you an alternate method of how you could answer this question. Okay, so first of all, the index numbers on the 10 are different. So my preferred method would be to change both of those numbers to ordinary numbers and calculate. However, just to show you a different method, what we could do is we could manipulate the question so that the index numbers are the same. So what I could do is if I could alter this to make it 10 to the power of 6 and at the same time alter this, then I could go ahead and use my alternate method. Have a look at what my working out should look like. Okay, so 5.2 times 10 to the power of 6, I'm going to leave that the same. That's going to stay the same. But I'm going to manipulate, I'm going to alter this so that I'm now dealing with 10 to the power of 6. So I've increased this 5 by 1. Because I've increased this, or I've made this 10 times bigger, I need to make this number 10 times smaller, which is why I've moved the decimal point to make this 0 0.9. So this is no longer in correct standard form because this is less than 1, but it does mean that my index numbers are now equal. So I can go ahead and use my alternate method. I can just take 5.2 and add it to 0 0.9, like I've done over here, which gives me 6.1. So I know my answer to this question is 6.1 times 10 to the power of 6. Because they were now equal, I was always going to be dealing with a 10 to the power of 6 in my answer. My final answer, 6.1 times 10 to the power of 6. This number was already between 1 and less than 10, so I didn't need to alter it or make any corrections like I did on my previous example. So you'll see I've achieved the same result. This is an alternate method which, in, which involves manipulating one of the standard forms to ensure that you have the same index number. Then you can go ahead and just deal with the numbers at the front of the standard form. So you now have two methods to choose from. However, I will state at this point that my preferred method is changing both numbers into ordinary numbers and then calculating and changing that answer back into standard form. That is my preferred method and so for the remainder of the video that is the method I'm going to use and when I show you my solutions and answers to the task that is the method that I will be using. So for consistency I'm going to use that method to approach all questions. Okay, so now it's your turn to have a go at a few questions. What I would like you to do at this point is I would like you to pause the video and I would like you to answer all four questions showing me your full working out and your full correct method. I did just mention that when I show you my solutions, I will be using the method 
of changing both numbers into ordinary numbers before carrying out the calculation. However, with this question here, because the index numbers are already equal, so there's no manipulation that needs to take place, you may use the alternate method for this question. Again, that just comes down to personal preference. Uh, okay, could you pause the video at this point and have a go at all four questions? Okay, welcome back to the video. I'll just go ahead and show you my solutions, my working out for each of the calculations. Okay, my working out looks like this. So you can see for question one, I've changed both numbers into ordinary numbers. I've went ahead and adding them, added them together to end up with 6,500,000. Then I've took my decimal point, I've moved it six places to the left to make this number 6.5 in between one and less than 10. Because I moved the decimal point six times, I'm dealing with 10 to the power of six. For the question at the top right, this time it's a subtract question. Again, I'm taking the same approach. I've changed both numbers into ordinary numbers. I've went ahead and carried out a subtract to be left with 200 and 80,000. Then I take my decimal point, move it five spaces to the left, so this number becomes 2.8, leaves me with 10 to the power of five, because I took five movements with the decimal point to the left. For this question down here, because the index numbers already started at five, they were already equal, I've, you could have used the alternate method to approach this question. Of course, you could have changed this to an ordinary number and this to an ordinary number and then changed your answer back into standard form. You would have ended up with the same answer. But if I approach this with the alternate method, 4 add 9 gives me 13. And that's going to be consistent with 10 to the power of 5. 13 is a little bit too big, so I take my decimal point move it once to the left, which means I increase my index number by one so that this is back into standard form. 1.3 times 10 to the power of six. For this question here, again, very similar uh, method and working out to the two questions above, resulting in an answer of 6.1 times 10 to the power of six. Now I would like you to have a go at a few exam questions. So we're going to work through four typical exam questions. At the minute, I've displayed the first two on the screen. Uh, could you pause the video at this point? Could you have a go at both questions? Again, showing your full working out, and then I will show you my answer to each question when you unpause the video. Could you have a go at each question now? Okay, welcome back. You can see from the first question, first of all, notice the language, evaluate, very typical exam language, just asking us to calculate, asking us to answer, asking us to work out. Just notice that in the first question, the index numbers are the same. So we could use the alternate method uh, for ease, or you may have been consistent and used the method of changing into ordinary numbers. Also notice that there's no brackets included in these questions, but I did mention earlier on in the video that doesn't affect the maths, it doesn't affect the calculation, and it certainly doesn't affect our method. Let's have a look at my answers for these two questions. Okay. So I left with 1.4 times 10 to the power of 13. So we were consistent with 10 to the power of 12. If you did the alternate method, you would then need to make one correction by moving the decimal place once, which is why we increased the index number to end up with 13. For the second question, change both numbers into ordinary numbers. Go ahead and do the addition and then change your answer back into standard form. 2.352 times 10 to the power of 4. 
two very typical exam questions. Let's have a go at two more typical exam questions. So I've placed two more questions on the screen that I'd like you to have a go at. The way they are presented is a very, very typical way for an examiner to present a standard form question. They, are, they often give you a list of values, a list of numbers, and then ask you to do something with those numbers, whether it's a multiplication, uh, a division, an addition, or a subtraction. So a very typical way of testing your knowledge of this subject. Okay, so could you read through both questions? Pause the video at this point and answer both questions on the screen. Okay, welcome back. And I'll just put up my final answers for each of these exam questions. Okay. Question three at the top of the screen here. Once the total annual world production of coffee and sugar. So essentially what it's asking you to do is add these two values together. So using the method we've discussed in this video, creating an addition for these two values, there's your answer. Find the total population of India, Turkey and Singapore. So this time we're taking all three values and adding them together. Once we change our final answer back into standard form, 1.29 times 10 to the power of nine. Very well done if you were able to answer those four exam questions correctly. That's showing a very good understanding of adding and subtracting with standard form.